A very warm welcome. Good morning to you. This is Off the Press on PLOS TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I don't do this alone. I have two guests with me to help make sense of it. So you can go get a copy for yourself. Um, I have uh, Dr. Femi Adegoke. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. And we also have Ifi Hodji. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Felicity. All right, we will start this morning with, let's start with a punch. Let's start with a punch newspaper and see what's here. Uh, the screamer is, Kogi killings. We can be victims of poor violence. That's senators speaking this morning. I have two writers to that story, details of which you will find on page two. That's it on your screen. Senate plans bill to stop violence during the election. UN condemns killings. It's irresponsible to say FG blackmailed Jonathan. That is presidency. At the very top of the paper, you will see reduce $57 budget oil benchmark. MPC tells federal government a bit of business and money matters. Crude rises to $64.17. Fuel subsidy hits 43 naira per liter. Allegations against Turkey, serious security issues, says DHQ, that's on Boko Haram. If you've been following us today, you would have noticed or heard it in the news earlier. Okay, there are all the headlines here, and the picture one is a sad one. Let's see if we can have it on the screen for you. That's it. 13 die, 150 injured as Ed Creek hits Albania. Uh, it's a very graphic photograph of all the uh, you know, pain that must have come out of uh, that uh, rubble. You have a woman stabs lover to death over another affair. That's on page four. Zamfar Assembly stops 10 million naira monthly pay for Yeri others. That's um, governor's allowance after they leave office. We have more stories here for you. Are you looking at that uh, red uh, patch on the screen? A policeman, policemen abducted me, demanded 500,000 naira ransom. That's according to a fashion designer. That's a huge, huge mm. allegation. Uh, the person went on to say, I was forced to transfer 185,000 naira to an account. Let's start with you, Ifi. Let's just take this one first. Please, men abducted me, demanded 500,000 Naira ransom. Does that worry you? It's obviously very worrisome, <laughs> Felicity. 500,000 is no uh, small amount. I mean, it sort of almost uh, echoes the other abduction that happened over the weekend as well, where they abducted a Chinese, uh, I mean, I think two or three representatives of a Chinese firm as well. I mean, it's basically telling you that, um, that there are other, that's basically telling you that there are other, um, it, it looks like in the near future that other such um, actions will, will occur. So, I mean, knowing full well that there are lots of abductions happening, I think Stephen Senate had, had, has almost tired of all these sort of uh, problems that are going on. And they have even tried to be a bit more sort of proactive with trying to uh, get drones and trying to um, put drones as uh, possible, uh, possible ways of implementation of um, trying to curb this in scourge at the moment. All right, your thoughts on this big one here, Kugi Killings. Yeah. They can be victims too, the senators are saying. Yes, they can, but the challenge I have, uh, I'm happy what they're trying to do. I, I agree they can, there should be a law to stop uh, violence during election. But my challenge is that uh, are they not the perpetrator? They are, our politicians are guilty of this. All our politicians across board. Because we read from reports that in Kogi, no one political, political party was uh, a saint. That they all had their own different ways of uh, promoting violence. That they all had thugs, they had people uh, doing all sorts. So um, it's just a call on our politicians to desist from using thugs and giving money to incite violence during election. Uh, from if your if, background, yeah. What, if, what if I may add to what Doctor is just saying as well, um, I was uh, privileged to be in a lecture yesterday by the great Professor Lumumba, and he had a perfectly uh, good anecdote that sort of fits this what we're trying to discuss right now. He is a very well-respected, prominent uh, academic in uh, Kenya. 
and he's a very good lawyer as well. And he, he, he seemed to have a lot of traction, especially in the early days of his career, where he would go from town hall to town hall, having all these meetings and having all these discussions with, uh, with citizens, one-on-one -on -one discussions, and trying to engage them. And they seemed to, there was so much uh, positive feedback from this engagement. But then he said that at the time, when, the, when it was time to actually vote, he was looking at, he was going back to those same uh, um, um, pull, um, polling sites, and he couldn't find one person that he had engaged with over the course of the year. And he found out that they had actually, from the, they had actually in, imported, people. imported people to these uh, polling stations. And nobody was actually originally from that designated location. So you find that these are some of the things that if we had e-voting, e for example, some of these issues will be taken care of. And there'll be a level of transparency where even violence would not be a, a recourse if, if people feel they're not going to win the elections or if uh, possible candidates feel that they're going to win the elections. So we just have to be very vigilant and we also have to be very um, uh, diligent in terms of how we push forward with these sort of uh, issues. Okay, before we move on from the Punch newspaper, I'd like you to take on any of these issues that you really want to speak on. I basically pointed out yeah. some of them for you. Okay, I uh, will speak on IPPIS, uh, unregistered electorals with forfeit December salary. Well, you know, we've had this ASU and the federal government back and forth, back and forth. They're even threatening strike. Yeah, but the federal government is taking a step. If you look at this story, they, begin, they are going to universities now to register lecturers. And I read that in Port Harcourt, in the University of Port Harcourt, some lecturers are already registering on the system, and the ASU is... I don't, that's, that's for me. So the federal government is already getting people on board, even within the academic system. And then I don't know why ASU is saying no. And then now, federal government is saying, if you don't come on board, you might forfeit your salary, salary in December. And then ASU will use that as a carrot to the people again, that they're not being paid. No, we're, we're, we, sh we should be a process system. All right, um, a quick look at the back page of The Punch. Uh, Requiem for Henry Boyo. That's uh, something you might want to read uh, from the back page of The Punch newspaper. We'll move on now to The Vanguard. The big one here is on border closure. Obasan Joe backs Buhari. Ask Bennett to mend its ways. Nigeria too big to be threatened by Bennett, says Professor Lumumba, mm -hmm. ex-Kenyan anti-grafts a Caesar. Mm -hmm. We also have says borders can be open without being porous. You find details of all of these on page five of the paper. Uh, before we uh, go look at other headlines, this border closure situation doesn't seem to be, you know, ending anytime soon. There seems to be one ripple after the other on this. I mean, there are two things that are certain about border closures that it's only going to be temporary based on, based on the fact that we've already signed the uh, African Continental Future Agreement. I mean, at the moment right now, you find that um, about 28 countries that are signatories to this uh, agreement have already, are already in phase two. They're already depositing their instruments of ratification. But that, that signals a, a clear direction where this agreement is going. It may not be something that, that will be enforced in my lifetime or your lifetime felicity, but this agreement is not going anywhere anytime soon. And I think that's what uh, uh, Professor Lumumba is actually referring to. As I was hope, privileged to attend this uh, uh, lecture that he, uh, he okay. spoke at yesterday. So he, he, his, his position is this, right? Nigeria as a country makes up 40% in terms of GDP of West Africa and all the offending uh, uh, borders around us. So. We are obviously the biggest, uh, we, we, the so-called sleeping giant and the biggest uh, uh, player in terms of what would happen across borders, in terms of trading cross borders in West Africa. So I think more than anything else, yes, we're, we're trying to have like uh, temporary measures to make sure that our uh, manufacturers and our traders and people that are in, in that industry are able to get themselves going. But that, that, that can't be the only solution. That can't be the only recourse. We have to have... Uh, uh, um, incentivization. We have to, it has to be, there has to be incentives. There has to be uh, manufacturing tax breaks. There has to be all, all kinds of a proper like schedule or framework in terms of all those kinds. But of that things. was not done before the. It yes, was just so a blanket order I that we're now that trying to, to sort of, you know, manage. That is the story of yeah. Africa. We just jump, dive in head first, and then we we, we ask questions later. But. 
I, I, as noble as their um, as noble as their um, their position is in Nigeria, I think we also also need to look from the back end as well and make sure that these uh, incentives are put in place. All right, uh, we have this one: government abduct Chinese uh, three Chinese. We mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, Senate six life jail for kidnappers. That's uh, something else on the front page. And then we have insecurity. Uh, Lagos State government offers amnesty to cultists. We seem to be in an era of you know amnesty to bandits, to com cultists, to all sorts of people who have committed crimes. Is this the way we should be dealing with security issues? Well. We might say it's not the right way, but it might be the needed way. Uh, because we've used force, we've used arrest, we've used uh, detain, we've detained a lot of them, but it seems it's not stopping. And it's simply because, uh, for example, the courtism now, everybody just wants to belong somewhere, uh, either for security or either for a different, any gain. So I think the government, Lagos State government, what they're trying to do is look for another ways to deal with these menace. So, yes, in as much as I personally might not support amnesty for criminals, but if we that's the way, yeah, we, we need to explore an option. If that's the way that will bring uh, yes. security to the state. All right, uh, there are other headlines here that um, we couldn't capture. The generator economy can sustain Nigeria, says Anglican uh, uh, Primate. Uh, you might want to go read that particular story. That's it on your screen, a very uh, top corner with the picture of a generator, which we popularly call here in Nigeria, I better pass my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, there are other headlines. Uh, minimum wage, labor issues, December 31 deadline to governors. How my wife reacted when I was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, that's showing cat. You might want to go read those up as well. Um, uh, the back page has the sports. Uh, if we can, if we have time, we'll get to it. Uh, but let's look at the Nation newspaper now. Uh, we have uh, issue on gender matching against rape. That's the picture uh, you have on your screen. Not there. Let's see if we can flip to the other side, where you have the pictures on the Nation newspaper. Um, you have uh, a picture of young women. That's it now. The under it, we might not see it clearly. It's written, marching against rape. And it um, highlights the people. The governor of Lagos State is there with a, a placard in his hand saying, stop rape, domestic violence, child abuse. And then the big one is federal government to oil firms pay outstanding 20 million 20 trillion naira debt enforcement of production sharing contract act to begin, says minister. Um, at the top, where we were before we came down, let's see if it will come on your screen now, why Jonathan is angry with PDP by presidency, Lagos plans amnesty, we've touched on that, Senate to leave uh, limitations on rape trial, and then uh, $57 budget, 2020 oil benchmark, unrealistic, says uh, CBN. If he, which of these would you want to speak on quickly? I'd like to speak on uh, um, the support and uh, solidarity that... Uh, uh, His Excellency, oh, sorry, um, Mr. Mr. Governor. Mr. Governor has shown, even though he has shown excellency in terms of how he has given the solidarity to w women. I mean, the gender is in Lagos State, and the, the women in Lagos State make up 50% of the entire uh, population, at the very least. So I think it's a good step from him to show that there's solidarity from Lagos State. In, in that same uh, vein, though, I would, I would urge and I would uh, encourage and I would plead with them to continue, and in, 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 in the interest of continuity, we, we know that there was also like um, there was also a DNA lab that was put in place by the previous uh, governor, and I, we know that there was also uh, certain other things that we know that can actually help and coax. But this it, it just looks like most of the advancement in the work to promote gender equality is epicentered in Lagos. Is it not possible to replicate this as adequately as Lagos State is doing? Because this is where you have like centers where rape victims that is very obvious in your face, you can mm -hmm. find. Mm -hmm. But in other parts of the country, it's not as prominent. I think also there's always, there's also been, uh, you're, you're correct, Felicity, you are correct. I mean, there's no reason why it can't be um, replicated. But in, in order to even replicate it, I want us to get to a position in Lagos State where we are at, at least 
a, a, a very uh, efficient way of managing this kind of problem. And which is why I was talking about making sure that we have DNA testing, that we also, also record our prosecution rates in rape trials. We also make sure that um, the statute of limitation and any other kind of impediments within the law are, are broken and are, taken, are lifted. So that way, we, when we have a, the, that model working, we can have this replicated in other states as well. For me, which of these headlines? Well, I, I want to add to what she said. It's, okay. not, it's not out of place or surprising that um, the bill to amend the uh, criminal code yeah. in the National Assembly Senate is actually being sponsored by the senator from uh, Lagos, Lagos Central, just to echo what she's saying. Mm. And don't forget, Lagos has about one-tenth population of the country. So, and, so I'll go back to look at the federal government to oil firms pay outstanding 20 trillion. Why did we wait till it gets to this? 20, 20 trillion, trillion debt. Naira. That's more than our budget for 2020. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I'm an energy lawyer as well. So what I will say to this is that this isn't actually in terms of it's what, what, what is being outstanding is the recovery oil and cost oil at the back end of it, okay. of the, um, the oils that are being sold. Okay. So in terms of actual cash, it's not actually actual cash, okay. you know what I mean? And the government also knows that because they are not in a position to uh, fund these fields okay. and because of the work that the um, oil companies are doing at capital intensive, okay. they have to make sure that at the end of the day that they have the capital in, 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 in its initial form to be able to even make the, the, the uh, profit oil that they can pay back on to the federal mm. government. So mm. that collection process, you're right, has to be worked on. But in terms of actually the mechanics of, of it, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a log in the system that um, most of these companies have, to have, have dealt with for a very long time. All right, let's see what's on this day newspaper. Uh, we have uh, little time left. The big one is, uh, there's a smiling picture. Let's not miss that one. Yeah. That's it on your screen, where the ambassador, the president and, and ambassador, uh, Mrs. Amina Mohammed, um, smiling at all of us this morning. But after that, you will see CBN six institutional reforms to stem smuggling migration of terrorists. Urges FG to reconsider $57 oil benchmark for 2020 budget. And you also see holds NPR at 13.5%, CRR at 22.5%. We also have another story at the top of the paper. And Malami tells IOCs to pay $62.1 billion PSC arrears. Senate tells Buhari to end impunity, inaugurate NDDC board. That's uh, the, I don't know if you guys are uh, familiar with the story and the controversy around the NDDC, the minister, you know, temporary board and all of that. Let's get your thoughts on it. Well, um, uh, uh, Senator Akpabio is the minister for NDDC and he, I think he inaugurated a four men board that temporary. will prepare for the president's board put, yes <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, i've uh, personally i feel why first do temporary before going to the substantial board there were people managing the ndc prior to you coming in yes so why don't you work with them why and there, there's a forensic um uh what's it called there's a forensic audit, audit going on as well. So you're not saying that it is this four men committee or board that we oversee the okay. forensic, which no. I don't understand it. Uh, but Senate coming in now, what do you think? Well, Should they be uh, interfering or allow the process to continue? No, it's part of the Senate's uh, National Indeed. Assembly's duty to yeah. perform oversight where they see the executive not doing mm. right, proceed. They're supposed to come up. Yes, and but in terms of the balance of yeah, powers. Yeah, it's, it's, it's within there. Mm. All right, which other headlines? Well, I would look to? at the CBN uh, reforms on system smuggling. I mean, it's, it's no, it's no, it hasn't been a, 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 a day's journey in terms of them trying to try and uh, recover monies that are being owed generally in Nigeria and to try and find a way to stimulate the economy. So regarding the uh, 57, oil, 57 dollar oil benchmark mm. that they're asking to be reduced, we know that even if no matter how uh, money, money, real, real money is, is actually the most important thing, not money that you are speculating mm. on and speculative money does not do anything for us, you know, at the end of the day. So why, why, what I would actually point out there is um, 
looking at the, I think it says the, or the seven, yeah, the, yeah, the percent. I would all take a, have a case study in Botswana, for example. There, for we, within their budget, they have to make sure that each of the different departments or the different ministries that have budget are self-funded almost and are internally generated. So that way, these kind of issues where you're trying to speculate or trying to mm. do, doesn't even occur in the first place. All right, um, let's see what's at the back of the paper before we wrap things up. Okay, K. Chikui speaking on INEC and offices in election. What is the thought this morning? Edifying elucidations. I like it when people speak to me, <laughs> Grandma. But I'm sure it will be an interesting read if you have the time in your busy day to go take a look at it. Uh, let's glance quickly through sports and then get your thoughts on them before we wrap things up. We have the Vanguard behind and then we have Complete Sports. Let's look at Complete Sports now. Rao, NFF owing me $100,000 that's uh, on the front page. Eagles boss considers coaching future as he chases outstanding pay. Um, we also have something on NDD Steel, top tackler in Europe. And then Ronaldo, Messi, Mena, top nominees. And the winner is, of course, Messi. Uh, we have other headlines here. Chelsea stars Val. Valencia must fall tonight. I guess that's a game um, a lot of sports fans are looking forward to. I'll uh, take a quick look at the back of the Vanguard Sports to see. Again, the uh, Super Eagles coach uh, situation with contract extension is captured here. Uh, we also have Messi to Yema. I'll leave uh, Barca in two years and you'll take my place. Um, I'll make history again. Andy Ruiz Jr. vows to beat AJ. So, gentlemen and lady, your quick thoughts as we wrap things up. Well, uh, I like to talk about Raw. He's not, uh, he's not uh, the news in Nigeria when we treat our coaches this way. He's saying he's been owed a hundred thousand dollars. Well, that's fine. And in his contract, he states that the government, NFF, Nigerian Football Federation, should be talking about his renewal of his contract six months prior. If he's not done six months prior to the, uh, the expiry date, he's allowed to start speaking to other country. And by January, his contract is supposed to end next June or so. And the man is asking for contract talks. And if he's not obliging not responding. him. So what is he's sending a message that by January now, if he begins to talk to other nations or other club outfits. Nobody should, should harass him. Exactly. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts as we wrap things up. I'm, now. I mean, I'm not a big football <laughs> person, but I, I would say that in terms of contracts and that are being owed as well, we need to, I, feel, I personally feel that it's my own personal opinion. We need to democratize and we need to also make sure that... Uh, we need to democratize any kind of sports around Nigeria in terms of any kind of federations and all of that stuff. So we don't run into this problem in the future. Thank you very much for your time this it's morning. It's appreciated. And thank you for sharing your time with us as well and off the press. It returns tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. to find time to join us so you can know which of the papers you really want to go get. My name is Felicity Ezi. We can enjoy the rest of your day.